India, one of the fastest growing economies in the world, has seen a renewed focus on manufacturing in the recent years. Delhi, India's federal capital, houses the corporate office of the leading blower and vacuum pump manufacturing company, Everest Blowers Group. Bahadurgarh, an industrial hub of Haryana, is home to the world-class manufacturing facilities of the Everest Blowers Group. Spread over 150,000 square feet, 250 plus employees with a capacity to manufacture 14,400 blowers per annum. This is the pressure division, ready to meet the future demands of twin lobe, tri lobe, and turbo blower globally. The largest manufacturer of roots blowers in the country and among the big names and whole of Southeast Asia, providing a solution oriented approach. In close vicinity is another facility spread over 65,000 square feet with 150 plus employees. The vacuum division is the new and fast growing company. The first and only Indian company to have successfully manufactured dry screw vacuum pumps in-house. Saluting the Make in India initiative, a current installed capacity to manufacture over 600 dry screw pumps per year with state-of-the-art, best-in-class mother machinery. Both these companies combined to form the Everest Group, a name synonymous with the world's highest mountain, the Mount Everest. Not just the same name, Everest Group has the same values too, to set benchmarks of performance, provide value for our customers, and to become the top solution provider of pressure and vacuum systems in Asia. The Everest Blowers Group, with its two divisions, has been scaling heights ever since its inception, becoming the largest blower and vacuum pump company in India. Since the early days, the Everest Blowers Group has been standing tall, towering above all other manufacturers of high-quality equipments in India. For me, it's a business I've been doing for the last 38 years. I belong to a service background with my father being a government lawyer. As an engineer by qualification and years of experience, today I'm proud to steer one of the fastest growing high-tech manufacturing companies of the country. I was fortunate to have hands-on experience in every department, design to production, to sales and marketing, having sufficient exposure which has been used constructively towards the growth of the company. Supported by a pool of young, talented Indians, we have always focused on solution-oriented approach and application engineering, creating new markets for our product. This has given us an edge over competition. Current economic indicators project a very encouraging image of India as a robust, fast-growing economy with least risks. The world is bullish on India, and so am I on the growth of Everest. We have a strong succession plan with highly competent second generation to carry on the mantle of Everest growth and legacy. We wish them all the success. Under the Everest Blowers Group umbrella, many world-class products are manufactured in both the pressure and vacuum division. In 1998, Everest Blowers Group went on to get its first ISO certification and also crossed international borders by exporting the products overseas. Over the years, Everest Blowers Group has made sure that it has abided by all industry norms through various certifications. The Everest Blowers Group has been associated with many different industrial giants from different verticals bagging prestigious orders from them. An innovative thinking and approach has made the company excel in many first-time achievements. Everest installed their first CNC machine in mid-2000s and since then has increased number of equipments to cater to the growing demand of the market. Everest started manufacturing their range of tri-low blowers as a more efficient alternative for reduction in noise and vibrations. The group has received accolades and admirations in the recent years, touching the sky. The vacuum systems facility also started a dedicated unit 
to cater to the needs of complete skid mounted systems requirements of our customers vacuum division is currently manufacturing around 350 to 400 complete skid mounted vacuum systems annually with a very wide industrial base spread across various applications The Everest Blowers Group is proud of its journey in scaling new heights and is in the pursuit of excellence. We are following latest industrial practices of Kaizen, 5S and other lean manufacturing techniques. To always remain connected with our stakeholders, we are available on all the leading digital platforms and have an online complaint portal, technical manuals and a vacuum calculator. It's been a little over eight years since I've joined our family business and we've experienced good growth with some diversification. I really enjoy what I do as every day is a new learning of something interesting helping us serve our customers better. So at Everest, we believe in very strong fundamentals of quality and innovation. We are the first and only company in India to have manufactured dry screw vacuum pumps, mechanical vapor recompressors, amongst many other products. With presence in the Indian market for over three decades and more than 150,000 equipments successfully installed, Running in 38 countries worldwide, we are a trusted brand. Our vision is to further build and sustain a positive relationship with our customers, to have an innovative and motivated work environment, and to ensure a bright future for all our stakeholders. The Everest Blowers Group, standing tall like Mount Everest, reaching for the sky, now and forever. Good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you all to our webinar on superfine vacuum systems for fractional distillation in methanol. And hope that all of you are keeping safe in this time of COVID-19 and taking care of all the precautions as suggested by the government of India. As you all are already familiar with the Everest group, uh, still I would like to brief a little about Everest as one of the fastest growing MSME in the country and the leaders in the manufacturing of vacuum boosters, dry screw vacuum pumps, MVRs and low temperature thermal evaporation plants in India. Everest is the only manufacturing company to receive the DSIR approved R&D facility by the government of India to provide continual improvement in design and offering solution to their users. Thus reducing effluent discharge and operational cost and increasing productivity in the process. 
let us take you to the contents uh, for the today's webinar introduction to everest and the speakers so taking you towards the speakers we have uh, on our panel today mr rakesh ahuja who is an experienced professional in sales and brand building of rotary equipments like compressors pumps etc for over 15 years in india and overseas and mr udit arora who is experienced and a growing professional with vast experience in various process industries and product selling into the uh, for over 5 years in the market so today is uh, we will discuss about what is peppermint oil what are their usage traditional methods for menthol production current methods for menthol production role and importance of vacuum in fractional distillation features benefits and advantages of everest superfine dry vacuum pumping system case study and cost benefit analysis over conventional technologies contaminants and how to control them rule 2030 the everest way to do it and last but not the least q and a session and a tsg free consultation enrollment for all of you so i'll uh, In, i would like mr rakesh ahuja to take it from here to introduce uh, everest in brief good afternoon everyone once again a very warm welcome to all of you who have joined us uh, in this series of webinars that we are conducting for our customer eco partner system let me introduce you to everest vacuum Everest is a Everest Vacuum is a 13 year young company of the Everest Group, which has started with the objective of providing turnkey vacuum solutions to a parent Everest Group. We were already manufacturing and supplying mechanical vacuum boosters to our customers. During this course, we realized that there were hardly any structured presence in the segment, providing completely engineered skid mounted vacuum systems, rightly sized to the customer's process requirements. The customers were typically purchasing vacuum pumps and boosters from different companies. integrating themselves and frequently facing the issues of sizing jamming condensate carry over etc leading to frequent pump failure or drop in operational efficiency this is when the management of everest decided to work in a structured way and offer comp Customers, Shant. Thank you. At Everest, we have a mission statement: Mission Five Five Five. Our mission at Everest Vacuum is to provide innovative engineering solutions in the entire range of vacuum. sorry for the interruption guys i think mr rakesh is having some internet issues uh, he'll be joining in back in a minute
Uh, in the meantime, I request Mr. Udin to take it up from here. Oh, sorry, Mr. Rakesh is there back. Rakesh. Nishant, am I audible? Yeah, Mr. Rakesh. Yes, I'm audible now. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. And my apologies for the error uh, from our systems. Let me start with this uh, slide once again. So at Everest, we have a mission system. at Everest Vacuum is to provide innovative engineering solutions in the entire range of vacuum by having state-of-the-art technology, optimized design, excellence in R&D, and manufacturing with a trust in uh, training and development of our employees, continuously expanding our operations, markets, and possibilities of collaboration to serve our customers better. And therefore, our mission statement why for moving the need for 58 hours in five years. That's a mission statement 555. So, let me introduce you to the product portfolio. We have and boosters, industrial public engineering vacuum systems, liquid ring based, also known as cement systems, already based, similarly, which are cement vacuum systems, protein based box and systems, low temperature thermal evaporation, which is more commonly known as zero liquid discharge and mechanical vapor recompression. So therefore, what is our promise to our customers? Clean, reliable, and sustainable vacuum, improved product yield, deeper and consistent vacuum, cost and space saving by right sizing, and reduced operation costs. Once again, very warm welcome to all of you who have spared your time to join us today in this seventh edition of our web webinar series. Back to Nishant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rakesh, for the valuable time uh, spent on the explanation about the history and the products of the Everest vacuum. I'll now request Mr. Udit to take you in detail of the distillation, its type, menthol distillation, and use of vacuum in menthol fractional distillation. So here's uh, to Mr. Udit. Good afternoon to everyone. Yeah, we will start from the peppermint oil. As we know, peppermint oil, which is produced on a commercial scale by the steam distillation by the peppermint crops. There are basically main two types of peppermint crops as mentha peperata and mentha avensis. As we know, the mentha peperata is found in US and Euro markets and the yield of mentha peperata is very, very less as near about 0.5%. And if you talk about the mentha avensis, mentha avensis crops are found in China and 
Japan and the yield of mentha avensis is about 2%. And also the yield of the mentha peppermint oil from the mentha crops, it also depends upon the plant condition, the dry, dry plant, soil quality, fertilizer quality, weather conditions as well. And if we talk about the uses of American and European peppermint oil, mostly American or European peppermint oil are used as a flavoring agent in the confectionery division or medicinal use. And if we talk about the Chinese peppermint, Chinese or Japanese peppermint oil used for a main source of menthol application, menthol production. Now we will understand the traditional method of mentha preparation. During a long time back when menthol production started in China, Japan and Brazil is to crystallize the peppermint oil at 0 to 20 degrees centigrade. Since the menthol is soluble in, in menthol and other constituents are present in the peppermint oil even at low temperature less than 0 degrees centigrade. A large portion of menthol is retained in the oil after the, after the crystallization process. So this is so-called demethylized oil contain about 50% menthol and this demethylized oil sold at one fourth price of the peppermint crystal, crystals. And the yield of menthol by this method, by traditional method, or by crystallization process is very low as compared to the any other process from the original oil. Let us understand this by example. Consider a hundred pound of peppermint oil. If if in the hundred point hundred pound of peppermint oil it contains eighty percent of menthol and twenty percent non-menthol constituents, there will be twenty percent menthol left in the demethylized oil after the crystallization. It means the yield will be 60% of menthol as per the 100 pound peppermint oil. Or we can say it's a 75% of the menthol present in the feed or in the peppermint original oil. Now, if the menthol present in the peppermint oil is about 60%, not 80%, then in this case, the crystallization during crystallization process crystal formation is about 40%, 33% of the menthol to be recovered only. And the 50% will be present in the peppermint oil or demethylized oil. Now, after this, we will do a conclusion for this method. So the only peppermint oil of a high content material may be used for the production of menthol by this method only. Since the menthol content of the oil is affected quite seriously by the climate conditions as well. It vary year to year as well. It also depends upon the weather conditions, soil conditions, or the dryness of the plant. Now we will talk about the present method of the menthol. As we know, in the traditional method, the yield of the menthol is very low, but due to the high demand globally or and high demand globally and a new method such as distillation allowed to separate the menthol from the peppermint oil beyond the solubility limit so that much 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 higher yield of the menthol may be obtained and peppermint oil from the low menthol content of the American and European origin as well where, where the yield is about 0.5 percent above. Now we will understand the distillation. Distillation is a process where we separate out the two miscible liquid whose boiling temperature is different from each other. There are two types of distillation process, a simple distillation and fractional distillation. Simple distillation is a process which is which basically separate out the two miscible liquid when the temperature difference of the both uh, solvents are more than 25 degrees. And during the fractulation distillation, it uses when the solvent temperature difference of the two solvent or multiple solvent it's under under 25 degrees centigrade. Now the composition of peppermint oil and its fractional distillation. 
the composition of peppermint oil is extremely complicated and about 22 per compounds are mainly identified in american and european based oil extracted from the crops but the three main constituents are there menthol menthol and methyl ester but the separation of menthol and menthone is very close to each other respectively respectively as 760 mg absolute the boiling point of menthol is 212 degrees centigrade and the boiling point of menthone is 209 degree at 760 mm it seems very difficult to separate the two component by fractional method fraction distillation but the boiling point difference became even more than the greater as to reduce when we will reduce the inside pressure of the fractional column or kettle up to 20 mm g then the temperature difference of both menthone and menthol is about 15 degree and if we will in increase the reduce the internal pressure then the temperature will again rise up to 18 degree now we will understand the importance of vacuum in the menthol production nowadays most modern manufacturing facilities use a vacuum technology for distillation process many distillation in the world use only dry screw vacuum pump with booster because these pumps are free from any operating fluid just like water or steam in menthol distillation the vacuum play an important role in the past liquid in vacuum pumps was previously used only to achieve a vacuum of 40 to 60 mbar this also had a typical problem of vacuum fluctuation which has successfully overcome by dry screw vacuum pump providing a higher permanent consistent vacuum in the process and the pump technology provide consistent vacuum and it provide desired quality of product as well few distiller operate at even lower pressure this is why vacuum booster are installed up a stream of the dry screw vacuum pump installed the vacuum pump vacuum booster are also driven by exact operating pressure and also depend on the oil to be distilled the operating temperature is usually slightly higher than the ambient temperature but slightly lower than the lower when the liquid ring vacuum pump or any other method of the vacuum generation now super screw dry screw pump from everest vacuum design in such a way that where application in which low super fine pressure pressure are required and where vapor are final product the major difference in previously used liquid ring vacuum pump is that super screw dry screw vacuum pump do not require any operating fluid to compress the process vapor this is why is it is called a dry screw vacuum pump in super screw pump two screw shaped rotor rotate in opposite direction and these screw help to move the vapor to the discharge much with compression during the compression process the screw rotor do not come in contact with each other or with the pump body and it guarantee a low ultimate pressure of 0.1 millibar screw vacuum pump operate using water cooling in the body of the pump and with the help of the cooling water in the water jacket it provide a temperature distribution throughout the pump body and the thermal stability as well in the entire process switch from liquid ring vacuum pump to dry screw vacuum technology has tremendous benefits such as quality assurance of the essential oil this also produce a complete and clear colorless oil during use of liquid ring vacuum pump means that operating fluid water and thus cost of it and the additional expenditure for maintenance work also eliminated when we use a dry screw vacuum pump this has also created new quality standard in the production of essential oil positive displacement pump dry screw pump average dry screw pump are our flagship product and a single who manufacture dry screw vacuum pump in house in india super screw pump operate using two counter rotating rota rotors these rotating rotors in opposite direction and trap the vapor in the between the pocket of the screws these pockets are not only compress the vapors it along the compression help to move the vapor toward the discharge of the pump since screw pump has 
micro spaces in between the rotating screw and the body, but still there's no requirement of lubrication. Therefore, we call dry screw vacuum pump. A screw pump are high tolerance against partic particles, employ high pumping speed and low ultimate pressure and high efficiency due to internal compression. There are a few advantages with a dry pumping system, high pumping speed and volumetric efficiency. Now, new patented sealing mechanism, low maintenance cost, no requirement of recoating on the body and rotor, or we can say contracted parts of vapor. Non-coated alloy steel pumps and uh, screw and body. ENP plated for corrosion protection under long life. 100% dry screw pump pumping, competitive pricing and strong service support. Now the mechanical vacuum boosters. Vacuum booster pump are commonly employed as a booster pump on the top of several pump of several beer pumps like rotary vane pump, screw pumps, liquid ring pump, and so on. The benefit of the uses of boosters, basically two, ultimate pressure or and increase the pumping speed to improve the process timing. Root pump employ two counter rotating interconnecting loads rotating within the body or stator. Gases enter through the innate intake flange and it pins between the two rapidly rotating rotor and the body as well on the wall. And it is then expelled through the discharge scale. There are few advantages for mechanical vacuum booster. 100% dry vacuum pumping. It's quite compact. Enjoy a long service life, robust design. Provide clear pumping. High pumping speed when coupled a bare pump. Power saving as well. And the competitive pricing and strong service support. Now there are few features, benefit and advantage of the dry screw vacuum pump. In dry screw vacuum pump, there's no use of steam, which means the system is dry and it avoids the cost of steam generation and effluent generation as well. It provides a consistent and reliable vacuum in the process. Dry system is a compact and skid mounted plug and play unit. Now a few benefits are there. High pumping speed, robust design, low maintenance cost as compared to steam generation and effluent treatment cost. High volumetric efficiency, dry pumping. Now other benefits, process benefits as well. Faster pump down and process timing. Effective and efficient distillation while keeping the process under optimum temperature and vacuum. Effective processing at high boiling solvent without igniting them and causing a thermal breakdown. Now average has a 20-30 rule. Average has a target to achieve operating cost, reduce the operating cost by 20% and more and more benchmarking the existing cost. Target to increase the productivity by 30% with the same setup of column with the, or we can say with existing conditions of the cost. Now we'll start with a case study of four state steam jet ejector system. In steam, steam jet ejector system, there are basically few problems in the old system and few other issues as well. I will discuss as, and I will compare with the dry pumping system. In wet technology, there are excessive effluent generation in the process, high cost of water treatment of the water discharge, mixing of vapor with a steam or water, vapor vacuum fluctuation during the process. When we replace the steam injector with dry screw pump, there are basically few benefits, we can say. 100% dry pumping, it's mechanical pump, 100% mechanical pumping, no use of steam or there's no effluent generation. Incident in start stop, zero direct effluent generation, zero cost of water treatment. There are some issues with the steam jet ejector system. Choking of steam jet nodules, time to time. Desired vacuum level not achieved. Desired product quality not achieved. Desired yield not achieved. High process cycle time, nuisance value of pollution approval every year to year. And respect to the issues, we have benefits as well. Consistent reliable vacuum, deeper ultimate and pressure process vacuum, improved product quality and higher yield. 
we was working with one of our customer of cost for the cost based analysis if the customer would replace a steam detector through a dry system the customer was basically spending in the operational cost is about including in a best system including the power and steam it's around 25 lakh 73280 rupees and when we have replaced with a dry vacuum pumping there is a power there is no use of steam in dry pumping so the power cost is 10 lakh 86912 rupees and if we talk about cooling water utility during the wet system the cooling water utility was is about 7 lakh 20000 rupees in our case we use water to only cool the pump body and the, the cost for this is 1 lakh 72800 rupees and this, we will discuss for the solvent recovery later in the same slide and the nitrogen purging in steam detector there is no use of nitrogen but in our system we use nitrogen or air purging as well it depend upon the vapor conditions in our case the web instrument air use of 32400 rupees only if we talk about maintenance cost the one year maintenance cost for wet system is about 275000 in dry system it's around 515000 yeah maintenance cost is increasing rapidly here and when we will adding the total operational cost the total operation cost for this wet system is around 3568 35 lakh 68,280 rupees, and in dry vacuum pumping, it's only 18 lakh 7,112 rupees. And the total saving when this basically in the wet system, customer was getting recovery of the vapor as well of 9 lakh rupees when we install the dry vacuum pumping. They was getting vapor recovery around 27 lakh rupees. So total saving with this as well, 35 lakh 6161,000. 168 rupees now in this we basically spend 50.64% on utility and saving on utility with a dry vacuum pumping 49.36% as we discussed solvent recovery and the productivity as well during the wet system the bed cycle was about 22 hr and when we installed dry pump dry vacuum pumping system it's around 18 hr best cycle now and the quality of the product is it increases from 98.5 to it's 99% product quality and the total solvent recovery in wet system the user was getting 9 lakh rupees during the installation of dry screw vacuum pumping it was around 27 lakh rupees during this replacement we faces some problem we want to discuss with you when we install the system we was facing with a problem of pump choking because of the vapor uh, process contamination are coming into the pump and they was choking the pump that time we discussed with our technical services group this is an internal group of average vacuum to discuss the problem we discussed with the team after discussion we found they have suggested us to install three main things in the between the system one is a trap Demister pad, intermediate condenser. It help. It was helping us to prevent to prevent the pump from the choking. After installing it, pump was running about one year completely breakdown free. Now we will understand the typical P N I T of the dry vacuum pump. This is a basically three stage vacuum pump system. We will understand the P N I T. There are two booster. One is Top booster. This is the middle booster, and this is our pump with interstage condenser of five meter square with fifty liter receiver with demister pad and inlet one micron filter. It also has vacuum transmitter to start the booster automatically when we got when we achieve the differential pressure. In the vacuum pumping system, we provide two panels: one for the safe zone, one is for the flammable zone for at the at the vacuum pumping system now how to control the contaminants and improve the pump performance process vapor and its condensation vapor condensation within the pump can create a great nuisance value if your vapor is condensing within the pump is it not good for the life of the pump 
the system of gas blast gas blasting or dilution technique are we used to prevent the condensation of vapor in the primary pump there is one more another popular approach to know the hot pumping is applied to prevent the vapor condensation within the pump thereby enhance the life of the these pumps what is hot pumping hot pumping is that we install a thermostat in the pump to maintain the internal temperature of the pump now second dust and particulate dust can be a product of a wide range of processes and the need to be filtered to prevent the potential pumps in vacuum pump rotor are moving at high speed with a very small running tolerance it is therefore no surprise that dust for a particle solid from the submission and the product of the corrosion are important to item to be excluded from any vacuum system dust from corrosion when pumping aggressive gases or vapors these gases may be themselves or in a combination with others create corrosive elements which can cause degradation of system mainly the pump and create rust type particles right material selection during the selection of vacuum pump can be avoided this at average we follow seven golden rules of pump maintenance rule number 1 read the operation and maintenance manual and follow the preventive checkups rule number 2 warm up the pump with the inlet block or follow the start up cycle or warm up cycle rule number 3 never block the pump outlet discharge line should be free without any blockage use an inlet cold trap unit to protect the pump from corrosive vapor or contaminants before the vacuum pump system rule number 5 use gas blast when working with condensable vapors rule number 6 protect the pump from particulate with an inlet filter as per the process requirement rule number 7 run the pump after use with inlet close to pour solvent contaminants before shutdown and shutdown cycle follow the shutdown cycle simply stated take care of your vacuum pump and they will take care of process from here mr nishan will continue yeah thank you udit thank you udit for thank you udit for briefing up the process band kar dena yaar bol ke thank you udit for taking up the process details in depth and uh, explaining about the distillation methods the types of process that you have told fractional and main distillation and the vacuum pump installation and the types of pumps to be used properly this is one of the important thing in the fractional distillation i believe when uh, every must everyone must be in accordance to the same also the golden rules that are being explained by you are very helpful and uh, not last but not the least one uh, the main golden rule is to follow all these rules to make and operate healthy pumps at your units they'll give you good returns in terms of production and will save out on your operational cost as mr rode has explained uh, the operational cost saving is going more than 40% in terms of traditional systems that are being used in the industry so these kind of vacuum pumps can help you in earning profits in terms of productivity and quality of your products next slide so this was our seventh webinar gentlemen and uh, we have previously conducted few webinars on the vacuum the efficiency juggernaut where we have explained the basics of vacuum uh, calculations and types of <coughs> pumps to be handled you can also see uh, the uh, link to the business i've been doing for the last 38 years i belong to a service background the vacuum pump the right the chemical yeah. and then the qualification and the years of experience so the proud to have a look at the first two months you will be able to Learn more on the field. Government region has also made a change to drive through vacuum, which we have explained 
the internals of the pump put a technology marketing things which has been used consistently the operational and mechanical vacuum boosters as mr odeda explained you were very full of and always focus on solution oriented approach for the application engineering creating new markets for our product right so pump vacuum for biodiesel this is one of the important topics we are looking at the project very encouraging in the past when you come to me the world this is bullish on india and so am i on the growth of everest and uh, also we have last webinar we have conducted is on high vacuum system for waste oil recycling uh, it is one of the uh, main wastage that we are having from our local locomotives and wherein people are refining these oils to be reused and utilized in their vehicles with the bigger companies who used to sell the new pumps like estrol and other companies so uh, in case you are offering uh, looking out for some solutions uh, to your current issues in the processes choosing the right pump or making the uh, pumps perform better in your existing processes or with the existing setups we have our tsg team to support you on that ground and uh, you can book your sessions for an audit by experts with the link provided over here you can note down the link and send it to send the details to us so that we can take an appointment from you and regional team can approach you on time for the solution so there are limited seats available so we are uh, doing it on first come first serve basis so we'll take limited uh, number over here so uh, i hope you must all have learned through this webinar and uh, in case you are having any queries any kind of questions you may please raise your hands through the uh, bottom menu and or put your questions in the q and a box so that we can answer them right now if there are any unanswered questions we will come back to you with the regional team support for your query resolution i hope you liked it please share your feedback valuable feedback as well and if you have any preferred topic to be discussed in our upcoming webinars please do share with us thank you take care Uh, okay gentlemen thank you for your valuable time uh, we are closing up this webinar if you have any queries you may please reach out to our regional teams and or they will contact you through your registered email ids and phone numbers thank you very much see you next time